Hello everyone, and welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist. We return to a colony devastated from an attack, but its leader still alive. And unfortunately we are at peak stress. Witness the failings of our people. Nah, but it's to totally fine. What you got to say, Mars? Nope. Alright, well, I do need to take a break. Sorry, to mourn. Governor Uticott is actually still alive. Calm is dead. What did we get from this? Oh, we would have gotten empathy, but we don't get any because of mourning. I'm gonna follow mom. You go with your mom to deliver the organic remains to the compost heap. You watch her respectfully tip them to the precious brown dirt that remains, and help her turn it with rakes to incorporate them, literally, into the future of the colony. She stands with you when you're done, offering them one last moment of silent thanks. On Earth, they used to say, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, your mom says. Some kind of religious thing. I never learned why, but I like knowing that everything I took from the ground so that I could live, I'll get to give back one last time. Uh, ooh, yeah, easy, easy, get rid of that one. Birthday, good old destruction, backstory, encouraging words, new medallion. Everyone's doing their best. Governor Uticott just looks super frail, although she is determined. I think they show up next month. Help rebuild. We are going to repair the greenhouses. Cami and Tal. Cami and Tal. Oh my god, Kim. <laughs> Tammy and Cal. Super cute. Oh, this is a pretty good hand. Don't mind if I do. 42. Look at that. Four sixes. Yeah, that was the best. Ooh, yeah, we'll take four toughness. 29. One more of those, uh, and we'll actually rank up in toughness. I don't know if we'll get one more, though. Yeah, no, okay. Helios time. Mars grabs your shoulder. It's another ship, she exclaims. Look, look, it's another spaceship from Earth. Excitement ripples through the crowd. Could it be? You stare up, unbelieving at the rapidly approaching ship. The flames of its entry into the atmosphere dissipate but a thick column of greasy black smoke trails behind it. Soon you can hear the whistle of it ripping through the atmosphere at terminal velocity. It is indeed not a controlled descent. Hello, Helios. Greetings, fugitives of Earth, the man says, spreading his hands wide. And here we have the actual villain of this route. We will be overthrowing him and becoming governor ourselves. This I swear. A dismayed murmur ripples through the crowd. The adults exchange significant looks. Chief Engineer Instance tries to slip out of the crowd, but she's stopped by the line of soldiers. Yeah, we'll listen. 
Eudicott steps forward out of the crowd. You're not the commander of the Heliopause, she st says firmly. Where is the person I was speaking to? Commander Morikawa. Everyone is surprised. Eudicott has been in communication with this ship? For how long? I am captain of the Heliopause, Lum repeats stubbornly, then adds, According to the chain of command, we, uh, sustained significant loss of personnel when we went through the wormhole. You can't help but notice many of the soldiers exchange looks this time. You wonder how many people had to die before Lum became commander. As the commanding officer, Lum continues, I declare this colony to be under our protection. As such, you are all now subject to the laws of Earth. To be quite blunt, young man, it appears you need us as much as we need you, Eudicott replies primly. The Vitamnan colony, such as it is, offers our hospitality to our guests from Earth. Ooh, Eudicott. Lum opens his mouth, but Eudicott cuts him off. Now, now, there's no need for this posturing. Whatever the purpose of your mission here, you'll learn soon that on this side of the wormhole, we are all human. Right now, we need each other more than we need mandates from Earth. Eudicott turns to the assembled colonists. Effective immediately, I will be stepping down as governor and turning leadership of the council to Lum at the, of the Heliopause. She says, she smiles genially at him. I hope that will satisfy your craving for justice, at least while we get our feet under us. Judging from the number of guns on display, you don't think you have a choice in this. It's a good thing the colony's in such a pathetic shape right now, your mom mutters under her breath. If they thought we were a colony, they'd probably just have shot us. Your dad squeezes your shoulders and tells her to be quiet. No one knows how to react. A new governor from Earth? Nearly a hundred new colonists, most of them trained soldiers? What does this mean for the colony? The crowd disperses slowly, and the council members follow Lum back into the heliopause. Presumably, to talk about the future of the colony, you hope. You track down your friends. So what do you think about these new people? Just going to boss us around. Tangent nods. They don't live here. They don't know what it's like. And that they're just going to swoop in and act like they're better than us? She hugs her arms around herself. Do you see what they were doing to Instance? The entire colony, now twice as many of you, sets, so there's about 200 of us now, there are about 100 of us left it seems, sets to work on salvaging the wreckage of the Heliopause, tearing it down and combining it with the Stratospheric's remaining engine section. Spirits are high, though these new colonists from the Heliopause aren't like any people you've ever met before. With their uniforms and weapons, they're more like an invading force than a rescue. You aren't sure what this means for the colony, or for your future. All right, yes, yes, we know about the Heliopods. Yeah, I get my own room again. 100% de-stress, calling defenses up to five. Now we have the second version of the colony. We got a log to start us off. We should see what Mars is doing. She's over with Rex, I do believe. There's this asshole. Practically run this place. Yeah. Let's leave this guy alone and never interact with him again. Hi, Dice. Oh, Dad's got something for us. Oh, and Mom. <laughs> Just skip through it. They won't tell me anyway.
Yeah, mom didn't die. Thanks, mom, for not dying. Oh, I could have chosen to not take that. How do I do that? Because I, I kind of don't want a red card, although it is a good red card. Another log, eh? Hey, Rex. Totally welcoming. I want hugs. It's in command. That away. I'll take you there. Why, hello, cutie, she says to Rex. Where did you come from? He looks her up and down and grins. I'm just an angel who fell from the sky, darling. Try not to gag as the two of them flirt. You give a loud ahem and point Rex towards the construction yard. He looks over at Mars with his shoulder and winks as he leaves. Mars. You approach Mars, who is deep in negotiations of some kind with Tangent. When Tange seizes you over Mars' shoulder, she points and says your name. Thank you. Forces of chance and chaos, Tange mutters, slipping away as Mars' attention turns to you. Oh, is this the capitalism thing? Oh, it's a makeover. Mars pretends not to hear her. Garrett, she exclaims, you're looking hideous today, darling. Luckily, I'm doing makeovers and fashion advice, free of charge. Alright, that's the thing we're doing now. Come with me, Mars says, directing you to her room. I've been working on these designs for weeks. They're fresh off the printer, and I'm dying to see how they look on a regular person like yourself. Mars's room is a riot of sparkling fabric. My first fashion line is all about dressing for the seasons of Vertumna, Mars says as she ushers you inside. Yellow and angular, yellow and angular for dust, airy and pink for pollen, stuff like that. If we ever make it back to Earth, I want to be known as the visionary who brought Vertumna home. People on Earth don't care about Vertumna. Mars considers this. You know, you're probably right. Why wallow in how boring this world is? Still, it's not bad to start with what you know, she concludes. There's no reason we can't prototype and iterate. Mars indicates the pile of outfits on her bed. Well, what are you waiting for? Chop chop. You try on outfit after outfit, letting Mars scrutinize your silhouette and bearing. She seems genuinely focused on how the clothing performs. Finally, you finish tying on all the outfits. I think the glow jumpsuit is the winner. Go ahead and put it on, Mars instructs. Then we'll do your hair and makeup. You sit on her bed as Mars pulls out her box of cosmetics. A day look, she asks, or something more bold for nighttime. Something subtle. Boring. Mars does your makeup efficiently and then pulls out a bottle of bright blue nail polish. One more thing and the look is complete. Mars paints your nails, humming tunelessly while she works. And voila, she says when she's done. I like dressing up. For you. Mars doesn't miss your tone and smiles as she caps the bottle of nail polish. Is that so? She says, voice warm and teasing. What else would you do for me? She bursts out laughing before she before you can respond. Don't even go there. Your nails are wet. If you mess them up, I'm gonna scream. Cute. Anything else with you? No. I can probably give you a gift though. Although I think you're at a hundred? You are, okay, so there's actually no point in giving you any more gifts. Let's view the notice board. Colony food supplies 110, security rating is 50. Okay. So I'm assuming working in the depot now will unlock something? Hey Dice, how you doing? You want a gift? I don't really have anything I think you'll like. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, and Nomi, how can I forget about them? Um, outfit. Laser Fable! Yeah, sure, I'll take a combat challenge. 76. Okay, okay. 
We're gonna do it by just being awesome. How's that sound? Sure, we'll keep that five for next round. Six, six, five. Sure. And now we just need to get a 30. Three, hell yeah. Cool. All right, now that that's done, let's go work in the depot and see if anything comes of that. I assume that's how it works. The back storerooms have been a mess since you started working in the depot, but now they're an absolute quagmire. Ever since the heliopause landed and they've combined the warehouses from both ships in a hurry, their storerooms have been overflowing. Nobody can find anything in there. Mars refuses to even set foot in there anymore, so you guess it's up to you. The worst part is, the Helio and Stratos use different barcode systems. You'll have to input everything by hand and come up with a way of organizing them into grouping that'll make sense. At least it's all in your holopalm and you have lift bots to help physically move the boxes. You can organize it all by moving icons around on your screen, just like a holopalm game. Well, our organizing is uh, currently maxed, so I think we should be fine here. First collectible use is free. Can I change my gear mid-fight? Can't change gear during a battle. Okay. Just checking. Got some decent cards here. Should probably save this one. on this last one. We do have a crystal to redraw a hand if we need to. Twenty-nine, that is definitely not good enough. Thirty-two. Forty-five. You can definitely just tank this one with uh, with items here. Fifty-one. Seven. Really had to, uh, to push that one. You start organizing. Green things over here, round things over here, things with stripes over here. Well, wait, where does the sports ball go? It's all three! Should you start a sporting goods section? At the end of the week, the storeroom is spotless. Everything has a perfect place. There's even space to walk. Seek and Mars take in the maj majesty of your hard work. You... You've done remarkably well considering the state it started in, Seek says. They punch in something on your holopalm. This deserves a raise. Organizing the storage room. Ooh, that one's really powerful it's with, if it's with a bunch of other Brainiac stuff. Even Mars is impressed. Oh, wow, she says. 
I don't know where everything is, but I feel like I understand how to find it. How did you do that? Zeke gives her a strange look and she just shrugs. What? Sometimes it's cool to put a little in a little extra effort, even if it is just some dumb boxes. There's persuasion up there. Did that just push us over a perk? I don't think so. That also didn't unlock anything for us in terms of uh, political maneuvering. y'all doing? Y'all are doing okay, so we shall move on. Do we have to do more of the, the delivering supplies? Anything for us over here in engineering? Not really. Alrighty, well then, it's back into the depot, and if we get nothing from the depot, maybe I will um, go do some delivering supplies instead. OMG! Mars enunciates, drawing your attention from stocking the shelves. Did you see the new requisition come in? It's from Rex. I wonder what he wants, she says, scrolling through it. Ugh, he's so hot. I hope it's something for me. He knows I like gifts, right? pull up the requisition on your own holopalm and it's a mess. Rex has no idea how to fill these things out. At the bottom, under additional comments, he's written, Lamau, Lamau, sorry, I don't know if I did this right, help! You and Mars exchange looks. If you want an excuse to spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Rex, you'll have to fight her for it. I don't really need, <laughs> you know what? You go for it, Mars. Rex stops by for some hands-on training with Mars on how to properly fill out a requisition. He cracks a joke about how she has to go slow because he's never done it before, and Mars laughs so loud you're sure Zeke is going to storm in here and bust him for wasting time. It takes him half an hour to fill out a form that usually takes you five minutes. Meanwhile, you have to stock the shell, the whole rest of the depot yourself. Oh, oh that's fine. I'm not jealous. I can share. And we got the work anyways, don't worry about it. Plus two bonus to straights, so that's pretty good. Uh, but I don't think I have much. I mean, I've got, I've got this. Six, six, seven. Okay, what if we swap you guys around? That is a 36. Got a 39. Okay, whatever. That's fine. Don't think we have anything. Oh, I should check outside, too. Okay, nothing out here. Sweep of the perimeter has been completed. Well, we did have an event happen. Yeah, here we go. Trying to find Administrator Seek to ask about something and accidentally stumble into a meeting they're having with Governor Lum. You didn't catch the topic of the argument, but you managed to piece together that Seek is trying to get Lum to come up with a way to explain something important to the colony. Whatever it is, Lum is dismissive about it hear him say he's not there to hear to hold people's hands, which frustrates Seek. Figure it out, Seek, he's, Lum says. That's your job. Convince Lum you can help. Tell Seek you can do it. You walk straight up to the two of them and declare you'd be a perfect governor's assistant. You can handle all this mindless busy work, freeing Lum up for his very important job of running the colony. Seek looks as annoyed with you as they are with Lum. The governor, however, is pleased by your audacity. He walks you to the bridge. Good. 
You can share that desk over there with Mars, he says. You've worked with Mars before, right? Good kid. Strang image. She handles my social media presence. Oh god, he has a social media presence. Oh no. <laughs> Call Fefe. Okay, um, random card locked in one slot. Well, that's not ideal, but that's fine. It's a very science brainiac path, not social at all. What with working in the depot and such. Okay, so that's a 28. You know what? That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Five stress, we can do that. And dust time. Ooh, hey Mars. Mars is working in the depot today. You find her sitting on a pile of boxes, drumming her feet against them as she flips dismissively through a magazine on her hollow palm. Every so often, she snorts at something she's read and rolls her eyes. Oh hey, Garrett, she says as you approach. Would you rather have a really bad body odor for a whole day, or have to spend the whole day naked? I'd be fine being naked. Me too, Mars says. I mean, if anyone can still be fabulous with no clothes on, it's probably you and me. I'm reading some of the teen magazines from Old Earth, Mars says. You know, like fashion and makeup and dating and stuff. She turns to a new page and reads out loud. Don't be afraid to use green concealer. You may look like the Wicked Witch at first, but don't click your heels and go home. Stick with it and you'll be on that yellow brick road to clear beautiful skin. Mars laughs incredulously. What does that even mean? Papa taught me to put on makeup because I wanted to be pretty like him, Mars says. But it was never like, cover up your blemishes, make your nose smaller, hide those, your skungle pores. And that's all they ever talk about in these things. And it's like, was Earth fashion really about making everyone look as small as possible? What was wrong with them? Mars gestures to herself. I was the biggest kid the whole time we were growing up, and I've always been gorgeous. And it's not just my genetic enhancement talking. Sometimes I think they should have just made everyone unable to feel shame, Mars says. Like, all these magazines talk about is how to fix your flaws or act different so people will like you. It's such a waste of time. Mars tosses her hair over her shoulder. People don't like me, they can flick off. I literally don't care what they think. Alright, dating advice. Ooh, I do have cute nicknames for you. Mars laughs. Really? Tell me. Actually, no, no, don't tell me. Do you get nervous around me? Never. Not even a little bit? Mars says, acting like she's affronted. Do you go out of your way to see me? A little bit. Aw, oh, Garrett. Mars beams. I am happy whenever you come talk with me. Us sophisticated folks gotta stick together. Mars makes a frustrated noise and dismisses her hollow scream. This is so wimpy, she groans. What was wrong with Earth teens? If you want to know if someone likes you, just ask them. It's easy if you're not a coward. Mars turns to you and leans in, bracketing your legs with her arms can smell her body lotion, light and floral, and feel the heat of her chest against your arm. That minus three kudos isn't great, but otherwise a good card. She pouts and looks at you through her lashes. What about it, Garrett? Do you like me? What's not to love about you, gorgeous? Mars smiles and tilts her head back. I didn't say love, she teases, but I'll take it. Cute. Alright, so that is done. Anything else happening in dust? We should check when Mr. Rex's birthday is. Because I have a steady supply of cakes for him. So take our free hug. When is your birthday, though? Early pollen. Okay, so that opportunity is missed. Hey, Nomi. Tammy. Nervous about Cal, so cute. Alright, I 
think we are otherwise good to proceed. Ooh, yellow flower. Take that. They're very helpful with my social cards. All right, let's go see what working for Lum is like. Persuasion and organizing. We already are max organizing. And that's pretty much it. One of your first tasks as an administrator is to format the monthly report to Earth. It's full of boring, carefully formatted data. Seek is very specific about it and makes you redo it three times until you get it right. You drop off the report at the comms desk and realize you've yet to be told how to process any reply from Earth. You wonder if they reply at all. Asking an adult. It's a decent card, actually. But investigate on your own. Sure. You sneakily read through the administrative holonet files you're allowed to access now. There's a huge backlog of messages, all dating from during the 20 years the stratospheric was in space. You scroll through the preview text quickly, not wanting to draw too much attention to yourself. The majority of the messages are updates from the colony's allies in the Vertumna group, but every so often there's a message ordering the ship to cease and return to Earth, putting an end to their illegal emigration and return their stolen property. If the Vertumna group weren't outlaws on Earth before, stealing congruence in the gene tech definitely did the trick. These messages are angry. There are no messages from any time after the stratospheric landed on Vertumna. Maybe nothing can get through the wormhole. Maybe the communication system was damaged, and it wasn't until the heliopause landed that communications could be restored. Or maybe both planets are just shouting into the void. It's impossible to say. Interesting. I'm curious as to what official answer they would have given. Probably some form of denial, I assume. Uh, yeah, I don't think either of these would have been better. First collectible use is free. Then in that case... Sure. Hey, we made a super goal. Cool, cool. Getting some good... Okay, so persuasion is the front end of this one, so we're... any bonus we get is going to that, not organizing. That's good, otherwise it would be out of waste. Bertamnalia. With Mars standing beside you, you wonder if the two ships will ever feel like one colony. Big speech. Council making bad choices. Got defenses. morning not celebrating I think we're gonna kind of lean into the rebellion a bit more here so that we take over talent show with Mars music video Rex is into it might as well keep up our trend with a photophoner although I should really practice that one more Ooh, that is a good ass card okay uh, card becomes yellow social Let's do this. And then we can safely do... That. And then we just gotta end this one out and we have a lot of really good well, a lot of decent cards here, so I think we should be okay. Ugh. We need to get rid of that boring card. Alright, so that's 40. We have logs? We do have a log. Push that one up to 43. It's unchangeable, so what if I do this? Perfect, that may give us a 4, 5, 6. I don't really have anything else I can do to them, though. So I guess we're gonna have to push through to keep our championship. 
I do not lose, puny human! The new arrivals all giggle when they see you pull out your photophoner. The photophoner fad was long over by the time they left Earth. None of the younger Helios even know what it is. Which means they're all stunned when you give them your best routine yet. It's a touching commemoration of everything the colony suffered this past year. A memorial for those lost, and a paeon of hope for the future all in one. You win by a large margin of raucous applause. Well, that is a completely new word for me. A paeon. A E A N. A song of praise or triumph. A thing that expresses enthusiastic praise. Pian. Pian. Okay. New word. Cool, cool. After the festivities, the mood in the colony is a lot lighter. Cool, cool. Nobody takes my championship away from me. I am the challenge show, absolute extraordinaire. I don't, I don't know what I was doing there. That wasn't even Arnold, but it was kind of Arnold. Don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, any goodies for us scattered around? Negatory. Okay. Back to working with the governor. The mood is somber as Mars calls the secret Fun Times Club meeting to order. Anemone won't be joining us today, she announces, or uh, probably ever again. She told me she's too busy with training and stuff. She didn't want to do any more sneaking around, she sniffs dismissively. It's okay, she was kind of a square anyway, but we need someone to replace her. So we're going to investigate the people from the new ship, she says. What are they like? What do they like to do for fun? More importantly, can we recruit them to the SFC? Mars stops and holds up her finger. Oh, and it's just SFC now. The Secret Fun Times Club was okay when we were little, but we're practically adults now. What about the new governor, Lum? Tanja asks. I know he's technically an adult, but he's fairly young. It would be beneficial to have someone with some actual clout on our side. Oh god, no. What a bad idea, Tanj. Marge, Mars gives Tanj a withering look. We already have someone important in the club, Tanj. Thank you for your contribution. She crosses her arms and thinks. I mean, Lum's alright. Kind of dumb, but like, you don't have to be smart to be hot, you know? I can't believe Utica just let him be in charge. I've listened in on some of his council meetings, and they are total chaos. It's like he has no idea what he's doing. Th that's kind of mean, Mars. I'm sure he's trying his best, but we should invite him over for snacks and tea, and see if he needs some help learning how to fit in. And, um, shouldn't we be trying to have fun, not get involved in politics? Unfortunately, I do not have good enough friendship with any of them. Sad Rex would have been a good one. You haven't really clicked with any of the Helios kids, and you know better than to suggest an adult. What about my dad? My dad's cool. You guys should hang out with my dad. No cards with gems, sadly, but that is a-okay. Five, seven, eight. Could have gotten a 40. Interesting. Wait, dust. Anyone? Anything? Looks like that is a no. Looks like that is a no. As chief administrator, Seek likes to think that they secretly run the colony behind the scenes. This manifests in them watching you very closely, suspicious of your motivations. 
to the adults, especially the older ones, you'll always be crash kids, not to be trusted with anything of importance. One day, they pull you aside. Garrett, I need your assistance for a classified mission, they say. You're surprised. Zeke never trusts anyone. Could this be a trap? Rebellion 31 or greater, you can definitely trust me for sure. You can trust me. Gains learning about Earth too. We already have that one, but that's fine. You probably shouldn't trust me. <laughs> Tell us about your weird sculptures. Oh yeah, because we know about that. I have to see it. Not another word. Sea kisses. I don't know what you're talking about. Cool. Seek stares at you for a long time, as if gauging if you're really trustworthy. In that case, they say, looking around to ensure you're not overheard, I need you to run down to the depot and pick up some personal items for the governor. You nod and make a note of the items. Wow, you didn't think people as young as Lum got hemorrhoids. Okay. Mild sympathy for Lum. Dealt with that most of my life since I was like 18 ish, 19 ish. So, yeah, it's not fun. It's really, really not. Paired with a bit of IBS kind of rules my life, but you know. I won't go into much detail on that, no one wants to be grossed out, they're here for this stuff. Mars is overjoyed when you bring her the gossip and gives you a few kudos as a finder's fee. Within a day, word's gotten out on the hollow net about Lum's unfortunate affliction. I actually feel kinda bad about that. Lum is on a band the next day, complaining about people spreading rumors and his image being tarnished really goes to show how disrespectful people are here outside of Earth's rule. Seek shoots you a smug look. They knew they couldn't trust you. Aw, that kinda sucks. But that's fine, I guess. Oh hey, this one's actually a social. Okay. Well, we've got those three there. It's a 30. You know what? Boom. Oh, yeah, because first collectible use is free. Yeah, this is way better. And... The 6 here. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I had a feeling I could have gotten a bit more. Only one more point, though. That's interesting. So, what if we were to change up our gear a little bit here? Also, it's now wet. Um, that plus two bonus to yellow straights is nice, but if we did that one, we're at 86. This one for now. But let's also maybe visit the depot. Bravery bonus would be nice. Two times bonus for straights is also pretty good. You know what? Let's go ahead and buy that. This one wouldn't be bad, but I would like one more slot before we do that. change this one. Actually, no, we'll change that one. Alright, it is now wet. Hey, Mars, it's your birthday, isn't it? Mars and Nomi are bent over one of- Oh, this is- this is the capitalism. Yes. We are going to support capitalism. Here's a hundred kudos. 
It's more where that came from, baby. Cute. I know one of the endings you can get is Merchant, and you have to support capitalism to get that one. I think uh, the next life we are going to do is the Transcendence one, and I'm going to rapid fire through that one, because uh, we basically just have to be explorers. We basically already almost got it before. And then uh, I'll pair that with, um, well, I don't want to spoil, but let's just say we're going to get Saul here on the main menu. Oh, look at that cannon. That's definitely a cannon. Two barrels. Any collectibles? 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 Doesn't appear to be. Alright, I'm just kind of wandering around. Let us get out there. Ooh, high collectible. We'll take that. Anything else? Now that I'm actually looking and not just wandering around. This looks like a herb. It's not. It's just plant. How dare you plant! Alright, let's get back to working for the governor. At the next SFC club meeting, Mars is frustrated that it's still just you, Mars, Tange, Tammy, and Cal. Tammy comments that she thinks it's nice when childhood friends still hang out together when they get older. Mars rolls her eyes. So I talked to Lum, Mars says, then holds up her hands in her defense. Not about the club, okay? I know how to keep a secret. I just wanted to get a closer look at him, you know? Tange smirks. Long story short, Lum's a total idiot, Mars sighs. All he wanted to talk about was how the colony is going to keep winning and winning. Now he wants me to help him make holonet vids for propaganda. Like, oh, look, we're doing so good, yay. Mars scowls. I mean, first of all, yuck. Second of all, double yuck. He just wants to sit at his desk all day and pretend like he doesn't see what's going on outside. I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's actually worse than Uticot. Mars slumps in her chair and puts her head in her hands. What are we going to do about this planky nullhead? We should overthrow the governor. Mars's eyes go- I just so casually. Mars's eyes go wide. What? But that's- We could. Why not? If we want a better future, we're going to have to build it ourselves. I liked Governor Uticott, Cal speaks up for once. She was really thoughtful and nice. Lama's letting people with guns run everything. It just makes me uncomfortable, man. Tammy nods her head in agreement. You look at the little SFC pin on your shirt and realize your silly childhood secret club might be turning into a bit of a political organization. Hell yeah, it's exactly what we need. Card becomes three? Well, that's kind of shitty bro not gonna lie I mean we gotta win but that's definitely not gonna be the best yeah 42 wow that's fine we take it we're at 90 persuasion all right you know what we are actually going to take a break from doing that and instead back to our photophoner for a bit. You practice the photophoner. You think you're getting pretty good. You hear from the new colonists that playing this photophoner is super cringe by the time they left Earth. Only children would play them. Badly. You don't mind. Honestly, being the only person who really cares about becoming good at using the photophoner means you're automatically the best. That is pretty cool. Best by default is still a win. Another card becomes three. I mean, I guess just take that one. And we'll make that a 37. Could have been a 38. And you know what? One more. 
There's plenty of Holofeds videos of people playing the photophoner. Apparently everyone was playing them on Earth for a few years before they fell out of fashion. There's videos featuring everything from kindergarten recitals to massive outdoor concerts with impressive lights and smoke. Maybe you'll be able to do a huge concert like that one day. It's also another ending for being a musician. I think I've already mentioned that, though. Oh, this is... Not ideal. Well, we'll have 69 hang out over in the corner like they like to do. And then maybe do a 236 over here. First collectible use is free. I mean, not really any point, is there? Uh, six more to get our creativity up for another rank. Let's find our crystal, go see Mars, and work for the governor again. And that'll end out our year. Silly crystal. That's out of bounds. Let me use melee Marth's uh, grab. Pull you in from the other side of the wall. Mara's out here? She is not. Though most people have made great efforts to find common ground, unrest between the Strato and Helio factions is common. The colony was founded with peaceful, egalitarian goals, and the soldiers and scientists of the Heliopods represent everything your parents and the Vertumna group were trying to escape on Earth. This fundamental cultural shock can be difficult to navigate, even for those with cooperation in their hearts. Then there are those who do not wish to cooperate. Instance barges into command while you're on shift, not waiting for an audience before she starts barking at Lum. Governor Inst- Governor Lum, she stabs. Tell your soldiers they are not and will never be welcome in my lab. Lum blinks. Soldiers? He says. Do you mean the researchers? At Instance's terse nod, Lum smiles and puts his feet up on the command console. We brought Earth's finest scientists with us, Instance, he says condescendingly. Experts, experts in their fields, every one of them. I thought you'd be grateful for the help. As assistants, Instant snaps. Not as lab heads. You can't just come in here and instate. I can, actually. Lum says, spreading his hands innocently like it's not his problem. Look at this place, Instance. Your weird hippie experiment failed. If it weren't for us, you'd be burying each other right now. Everyone has to work together. Just then, the aforementioned researchers catch up to Instance, Instance and all start talking over each other, demanding that the governor order Instance to stop treating them like interns and start promoting Helios to lead positions. Instance starts yelling back, and command becomes a chaos of scientists screaming and waving their arms in consternation at each other. We'll side with Instance here. Instance's right to protect the colony from presumptuous eggheads with Earth's poisonous ideas in their head. If the researchers want to help, they can do as they're told. You add your voice to the din, though probably only Lum hears you. He frowns. Lum tells you to ignore them and get back to work. Put on music so you can focus. Listen while you file reports. You could practically write these reports back to Earth with your eyes closed, or in this case, with your ears open. You half-heartedly type up a report and continue to listen in. If you think I'm going to just hand over classified colony intelligence to a bunch of space cops, Instant spits and the researchers all clamor to deny their relationship to the Heliopods military. Don't you pretend like you don't want to send me back to Earth in chains, she snaps right back. That's why you're here, isn't it? You don't care about Vertumna. You care about recovering your master stolen property. Uticot, how fluorescent, you're just here to arrest us all. Instant stands ramrod straight, her face crimson with fury. Well, you're not going to get me. You're not going to get my work, either. Lum steps in, finally. Now, Instance, he says. You're right. We were sent here to bring you to justice. But now we're one colony. Neither ship is leaving Vertumna again. I sent a message to Earth telling them that the colony was a failure and justice had already been served. No one's coming for you. 
How can you know that? Instant says. We haven't heard anything back from Earth since we went through the wormhole. They could be sending a new fleet of ships right now. A strange expression crosses Lum's face. I've been in contact with Earth, he says with an air of finality. They told us to stand down and refocus our efforts on colonizing Vertumna. The room once again erupts into chaos. You try to get back to Earth work. These reports to Earth that you thought were just busy work may be more important than you realized. Interesting. Another card becomes three. They're really hitting us with that one. Well, that's fine. I won't get any bonuses, but it's still a thing. Ooh, look at that. We still could have gotten a 55. Wow. One more month like that, though, and Persuasion is maxed out. Uh, I don't need to fight. This is Lum showing off his explosions. And just like that, everyone is safe. Cool. Well, new year, end of episode. Still hear the alarms ringing. <laughs> so, thank you to everyone for joining me. I hope you had fun. If you like this kind of content, want to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you all next time for some more. I was a teenage exo colonist. Bye bye.